let's look at part three of chapter three. We're going to start off now with expressions of quantity. So these express how much you have of stuff generally. The basic uh, uh, expression of quantity is tonde, which means so many or so much. Pretty, a pretty much general uh, uh, expression of quantity, expressing kind of a lot. So we have the expression tonne de livre, which would be so many books, and tonne de confusion, so much confusion. And that would be so, so we've got so many and so much. Now we use so many when the noun is countable. You wouldn't say so much books. You'd say so many books. But you didn't have one book, two books, three books, four books. And we use much when the noun is not countable. You can't say one confusion, two confusion, three confusions. So we use much for non-countable nouns. Now those are, that distinction between uh, countable and non-countable nouns has a huge effect on the, our choice of vocabulary. We don't think too much in terms of countable or non-countable, but that's uh, uh, when foreign language speakers learn English, they have to learn that really well, that whenever they learn a noun, they have to learn whether it's countable or not countable, so that words like many and much they can use appropriately. Asse, sometimes accompanied by de, means enough, rather, or somewhat. So like if I talk about assez de clarté, meaning enough clarity, or, uh, um, uh, yeah, there's assez de clarté, there's a, enough, there's not a whole lot, there's not too little, but there's enough uh, clarity there. Une idée assez claire would be a somewhat clear idea, or an idea clear enough, not too, not really clear, um, but it's, it's clear enough. Tro, sometimes with de, means too much, or too many, or too. Well, there should be a comma there, sorry about that. If we have tro de difficulté, that means too many difficulties. Tro de space would be too much space. So again, we have many with uh, the countable nouns, difficulties, and uh, much for the non-countable uh, uh, nouns. Now, if we were talking about parking spaces, we could say too many spaces. But if we're talking about space in general, um, we would uh, it's non -count not countable, and we could say there's too much space there. Tro difficile means too difficult. Now, there's other expressions in the textbook on page 44, and you should stop this video, go through those, take notes on those, and make flashcards for them, and memorize all of these in this section, and then come back and finish watching the rest of this video. Let's pay uh, special attention to the verb p, one of these... Uh, uh, words of quantity, and it generally means little, uh, not much. And we've got a lot of different expressions and a lot of different ways that it's used in sentences that give it quite a range of meanings. So if we talk about um, un peu, a little, um, it means a little used as an adverb. What does that mean to have a little? That sounds like a... a indefinite article plus a, an adjective used as a noun. Je t'aime un peu means I love you a little. So it, in English we use the expression a little as an adverb also. Um, je suis un peu fatigué. So here we've got un peu in front of fatigué, tired. I am a little tired. Or I am a bit tired, we could say. We can also use the expression un peu de, which means a little of, a little of something. And this is an adjective of quantity. So if I talk about un peu de travail, travail is work, that would be a little work. I hope you're doing a lot more than un peu de travail. You should be doing a lot of work, not a little work for this class. 
Peu de plus a singular noun means little. Peu de volonté means little willpower, little desire to do it. Peu de plus a plural noun means few. I hope that you're making on these translations. Peu d'erreur, meaning few errors. So the peu de means few in this sentences. sentence. The peu de means little in a peu de volonté, little willpower. Now, the real tricky one is when we use a peu as an adverb to mod modify an adjective. That means it's the same thing as the suffix in or un, or sometimes we just stick the word not to indicate the opposite of the word. So if we have a mechanisme, so a mechanism, peu compliqué, compliqué is complicated. So a mechanisme, peu compliqué, means an uncomplicated mechanism or a not complicated mechanism. So the p um, indicates basically it's making it into an opposite, uh, a not complicated mechanism. We could translate that as. Um, so that's a, a little tricky because rather than we wouldn't want to say uh, a little complicated mechanism, that wouldn't be right because that would make it sound like we're talking about a little mechanism that's complicated. Um, we could say a mechanism not very complicated, or a not very complicated mechanism, or an uncomplicated mechanism, something like, like that. So here we have seven sentences, and stop the, when the video ends, you can write down the, uh, your translation of these seven sentences and watch the next video for the translation.